Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Fiji to Studio, and today I'd like to share with you a workflow that I use to get better performance and avoid crashes when working with motion graphic design in DaVinci Resolve. So if you're ready, let's check it out. All right, so in DaVinci Resolve right now, we're on the edit page, and the tips that I'm gonna share today has nothing to do with uh, rendering cache or with using proxy or anything like that. If you're interested into those methods, I will link to another video that I've made a while back explaining how to get a real-time playback with a motion graphic asset and try to optimize your performance. So I will link that in the description below. But sometimes even by rendering the cache or using some proxy, you can still run into some issue when you are creating complicated projects. So today I'm going to share with you how I use the render in place functionality in my workflow to make it smoother and avoid DaVinci to shut down when the software starts to get overwhelmed because there is just too many track open and there is just like too many things going on. So right now to demonstrate that, I'm gonna use our map pack. It's available on our website if you're interested in that. But so let's just start by bringing here a world map. I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit. And as you can see, if I play that, it's just playing back just fine and I'm not running into any issue. But if I start to just stack up a lot of things on top of each other and here create maybe seven, eight, nine, or 10 different tracks, I'm gonna start to run into some issues. So here, let's just do that. I'm gonna create a few and maybe, okay, nine. And now if I play it, as you can see, it's struggling. Like it's not playing right away. It's already a bit tricky, but at least it's playing. Sometimes depending on the spec of your computer, it might not play. Let's try to add a few more and see if uh, it's eventually gonna end up slowing down. So now as you can see, I've created 18 different tracks. We have a bunch of different country and we have a line title uh, right over it. As you can see, we're starting to struggle with the playback. We're about uh, eight FPS at the moment, but it's still playable. The thing to note though, is that I'm on M1 Max with 32 gig of RAM. So I'm gonna get better performance than if you just having something with 16 gig of RAM on the Windows, for example. In that case, you might struggle a lot more than I do right now. And that's because the fusion composition or macros are harder to play than a video clip that are already processed. Every time you're playing, DaVinci needs to go to fusion and just kind of like going through that and process it and play it rather than if you have your clip just already rendered, it will just play smoothly at 24 FPS without any issue. So when I know I'm gonna use that many assets and use a lot of different layers, I'm gonna start to use render in place. To use render in place, you can just right click on any asset that you wish to render, select render in place. It will just prompt open this window. And then here the codec that you choose is important because right now if I just keep the default codec and render that, it's gonna ask me wherever I want to save that clip. So just uh, create a folder within your project folder and just save it there. But now, as you can see, the issue is that I have a black background and that's just completely messing up with my composition. That's why choosing the right codec is important because you want a codec that got transparency. So I'm just gonna do Command Z to just undo that. And now we're gonna try that again by right-clicking, render in place, and here is the codec that I would recommend for transparency on the Mac. You could go with Apple ProRes and then here in type, you select Apple ProRes 4444 4, 4, 4, instead of 422. 2. And then if you're on Windows, you will not have the Apple ProRes codec. So the second best option is to select GoPro Cineform and then here RGB 16 bit. And now if we run the dat, I'm just gonna save it again. As you can see now, my title has been transformed to a dot .move clip, and now I can just play it easily at 24 FPS without any issue. That's make it a lot easier to manage when you start to stack up a lot of different effects on top of each other. Also, the perks of working like that is that it pushes you to be more organized because you're working in layer. You're just validating your first layer, and then you're just gonna do a second layer, and you're just basically gonna group uh, things layer by layer and instead of having 18 track you're just gonna have maybe three four or five that make it a lot easier to read it through the project and to then adjust things down the line for example here i have all those countries what i could do is simply select all of them then just create a new compound clip and then we're basically gonna render in place that compound clip so i'm gonna right click on it render in place same thing here and then render and now instead of having all those track, I only have two. So I can just bring that down and it's now easier to read through the timeline. 
The good thing, however, is that this is non-destructive. At any moment, we can just go back and unrender what we just rendered. So here, if I want to make some modification to the multi-line, because now, obviously, as you can see, I don't have access to anything in the inspector because it's a video clip, not, not a title. So I can always just right-click on it, and then here, decompose to original, and now it will simply give me back the original line. I can then just do any modification that I wish to do to the position of point. So here, for example, we bring that uh, onto a country. And then once I'm fine with the change, I can just right click on it and render in place again. And in my opinion, the fourth advantage on top of having a real time playback without any issue, the organization aspect of it and avoiding DaVinci to become overwhelmed and end up crashing. Since those files are already rendered and the actual video file that are living within your project folder is that you can just share that file and you will not need to reconnect anything but those files. So that way you might avoid to have like any sort of relinking problem when you're sharing your project with another users. This is valid for like complex project when you're stacking up things, but also for titles that are pretty heavy, for example, or list and bullet point pack. Those titles are pretty heavy because they pack a lot of functionality. They have a lot of things going on. Uh, that make them very easy to adjust and to customize. But then the playback is not necessarily the best, especially if you don't have a very good computer. So right now, even on my Mac M1 Max, I'm running only at 6 FPS on that title. But it's affecting only the playback. So what I can do is simply do all the modification that I want to do to that title. And once I'm happy with it, I can just render it in place and then I will be good to go and I will get real-time playback. As you can see, went from 6 to 24 without any issue. Again, I will link to another video that I've made about getting a real-time playback inside of DaVinci Resolve because this is a good workflow. It will get you a good result in any cases, but that's not necessarily the most practical since we have to render each clip every time. So first, look at rendering your cache and potentially using a timeline proxy resolution. But if that's still not enough for you, you can always use that technique. It has been very reliable for me over the years. And that's pretty much it. Thank you very much for watching. Please let me know in the comment what kind of video you would like to see next. I'm reading all the comments, trying to reply as much as possible and taking that into account to make those videos. So please let me know what you want to see next. Thank you so much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.